Hello everyone, my name is Wu Yinbyo. My PhD project title is Managing Phytotoxicity of Swinebone Herbicide Residue in Grain Cropping System. Herbicide carryover or accumulation in the soil from the previous cropping seasons may occur if their frequency of use and their persistence outweighs their dissipation rate. Uh, as you can see in this picture, herbicide residue in the soil can be harmful on the crop growth and development or eventually kill in the severe cases. A soil survey from 84 Australian cropping soils found that diron was one of the most frequently detected herbicide residue together with glyphosate, its primary metabolites, AMPA, trifluralin, and diplopenicin. A diron herbicide residue was frequently detected in the soil sample of Western Australian uh, paddock with the average and maximum range of 0.17 and 0.29 kg AI per header. Moreover, a recent meta-analysis indicated that diron herbicide residue was detected in the various monitor site with berry degree from 0.42 to 2,100 microgram per kilogram. So, diron herbicide could persist longer in the soil from the weeks to over a year, so its residue can cause subtly the damage to the rotational crops. However, uh, there are very few publicly available threshold values for assessing toxicity threshold values for the swine-borne diron herbicide residue to the grain crops. Therefore, to examine the bioavailable herbicide residue in the soil and the toxicity threshold levels that can cause crop damage, 28 days herbicide bioassay was carried out in the glass house. Eight different concentrations of diron herbicides are applied to the sand and loamy sand soil. Three bioassay species, canola, chippy, and wheat, were planted in the plastic pot. The dose response curve derived from the uh, herbicide bioassay can be used to estimate the toxicity threshold level of herbicides for cross species. The effective dose of diron herbicide that can cause 20% or 50% inhibition of tested crop species that are ED20 and ED50 values were determined by fitting their shoot and root biomass and lunch data through the four-parameter lot logistic nonlinear regression model by using the ARCS open software. According to the soil types and cross species, their shoot and root respond to the herbicides are buried. At the level rate, more than 50% inhibition of all tested crop species are observed. On the other hand, affected dose value of diron herbicide in the sand is much lower than the loamy sand soil. The reason that diron herbicide is more phytotoxic in the sand soil may be due to the sand soil contains lower organic matter and cation chain capacity compared to loamy sand soil. The diron herbicide residue uh, estimated for the Western Australia pedals are greater than or equal to the ED50 values in both soil types. So the result of the dose response curves, we can say that the lower the ED values means the higher the phytotoxicity of the herbicides. So when we compare the affected dose value among the different cross species, we can see that canola crop has the smallest values and are followed by the wheat and chippy. Although tyrone herbicide is the photosynthesis inhibitor, in my study, all of the tested crops show their root response is much greater than shoot response. To summarize, plant bioassays was an effective method to detect the phytotoxicity risks of tyrone herbicide residues that present in the soil. The phytotoxicity level of tyrone herbicide is much greater in the sand soil compared to loamy sand soil. The diron herbicide residue present in the Western Australia uh, pedops are greater than or equal to the ED50 values in, in both soil types. The canola crops show the most sensitive to the diron herbicides compared to the wheat and chippee. The liver rate of diron herbicides uh, can cause more than 50% inhibition of all tested species in both soil types. But we need further research 
to determine the effect of organic matter level, clay contents level, and cation chain capacity on the toxicity threshold levels of diron harvest sites on non-target crops. Thank you.